weekend all. I'm Ray Epstein, and here we are with your Spider ETF wrap up, but it's your weekend edition, which means we're going to look at weekly charts for the bigger picture. Now, there's an important event that took place today, and what do you think it was? All week long, I have backed off in my paid subscriber videos from telling traders to do too much. I wanted them to be able to move into the market off the Fed. But we had to first see what happened. What well, was an eight-minute speech, and what did it do? Maybe we should take a look at it. Here's what it was. Mr. Powell said the bank must show its resolve to conquer inflation. Is he talking about himself? I think it is. Who's he talking to? He's talking to you that don't believe that he'll have that resolve. You think he'll fade, many of you, that's why he had a summer rally, at the first sign that the U.S. economy is weakening. Well, your argument falls on bad words because he brought into the name right here, Paul Volcker. Paul Volcker, go back and read your history where America was at that time. I realize I have this gray hair. I realize I'm an older gentleman out here. I am a gentleman, by the way, uh, that has lots of experience. I have been a registered broker since 1969 continuously, all right? That's a lot more years than a lot of you are that are watching this in, a, in your total age. I remember Volcker. I remember inflation that wouldn't go away. He is alluding to that. He is trying to tell you a message. And the message is, it's going to be rough. Follow me. There's going to be pain along the way. He's prepping you. Next, the Fed is going to take forceful and rapid steps to moderate demand. He didn't say that interest rates just got to keep galloping. Some are going to take this part that he said, at some point we'll slow the pace of interest rate hikes and they'll go, aha, I told you he won't have the resolve, he's going to back away. That's not a pivot. You're looking for the pivot that says he's going to go the other way, he's done. They will end and they'll probably end when, in, when probably you get inflation under four to three and a half percent. That's my own guess on it. They're not going to stop at five. They're not going to stop at six percent. If you think so, shame on you. That doesn't mean you'll get 50 point hikes. You could get 25s. Why? You don't want to break the economy. You want to do something. You've got to slow, slow demand. You've got to show its resolve to conquer inflation. That's the key. The U.S. economy slowing, look what he's saying, but there's underlying momentum. The labor market, particularly strong, and they think so strong it might be just out of balance. Longer-term inflation is well anchored. How do you break it? Go back to Volcker. You have to do what you have to do. You, you know, he went to double-digit interest rates. Yeah, I know that most of you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. But it was insanity. I remember, uh, because as a brokerage firm, you, you were getting what's called customer float in those days. So the customers would say, put all my monies in T-bills. I'm, I'm making all this money. And we would do that, and they could trade against their T-bills. Nobody does that today, not with interest rates this low. It just doesn't exist. So a different world Learn from the past. He has the resolve. He mentioned the man. He didn't have to mention him. He had mentioned Bernanke. He was certain to mention Volcker, and that was my tip-off. Once he mentioned Volcker, I think he's read the press, what people are saying, that he's going to be wimpish. I don't think that's what you're going to get out of this Fed chair now. I applaud him for what he did. All right, so that's going to bring us back to where we're at. So it was a hellacious day to the downside. Do we have any green on this board? Take a look. One area, TLT. Why? It's the 20-year plus. So the far end of the curve yield, they're not out to touch that. Some people think it won't get beyond 375, in fact, on that. It's the front end that they're after. And the question there, are we going to 3.75, 4, 4 and a quarter, 5? You're going to get to a number that beats inflation. How sticky inflation is will determine what the Fed does. Now, you're probably in for a shock because this coming CPI report, I would assume prices have dropped during that measuring period. So for eight and a half, you might see eight, seven and a half, something in that range wouldn't surprise me. 
I'd be surprised if it stayed at eight and a half. That would just prove how sticky it is, but I don't think it's done that. That does not mean it's on a big trajectory back to 2%. It means it's falling. But at that number and where you're at on the Fed rate right now, there's to me a pretty big gap, maybe four percentage points. You got to narrow that in. The Fed isn't going to back off here. You can believe as you want, I'll believe as I want. So we'll finish up with Freeport just because we talked about it all this time. You can see how the market's been slipping back. It's void of the trends. You have a lower and low, higher high. That is not a trend. The bias, the market is staying under the 18 week average of closes. This is the 100 and this is the 200. So prior to this, if we just take a look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let me come back to that. Just can't get that, my, my mistake on that. Um, I think it's just on rallies, we'll have resistance up there, but I don't think it's a sale or a buy. I think it's nothing right here. And I think it will get its legs at 74.57. Why? Because copper is going to be in such demand from China. China needs to get its property market back on its feet. They can say they're not going to do any more stimulus till they're blue in the face. They'll keep doing it because they've got the party Congress coming up. Mr. Chi wants to get another election under his belt. and He cannot look at all those delegates that come in with property values in each of their provinces collapsing on them and thinking that he's going to really have their support. I don't know how they'd vote because it's China. You never know what's going to happen. But it's not good. They say they're not going to do anything. The day they said no, they threw another $149 billion at the general market. They said, oh, it's not property. Really, it's infrastructure. Hmm. It's general loans. Oh, oh. They're liars. It's all about property right now. It's all about property to get jobs, to get the economy back on its feet because their COVID situation is insanity. And they're going to get another round of it and they're probably going to do what they continue to do. Insane people keep doing the same thing over and over and they expect a different result. It's called insanity. I didn't make it up. Didn't uh, Einstein make that up? Lower low, higher high, middle of nowhere and momentum nowhere. Now, I think up here was the time to have gotten out of KBE, the bank index. Why? Do you understand enough about Bollinger Bands? The season for trading is now upon you. Yeah, you'll get uh, some lightness this week because we have Labor Day coming up a week from Monday. I think it's that's going to be the day that we get off. But after that, all the A-League traders are back. Everybody's back. The volume starts gradually now moving back up starting this week. It won't be lighter. It'll be probably a little bigger than normal. The ranges narrow in, people come back. A lot of kids are all back in school, so the families had to cut their vacations this year because of COVID, start treating the market different. If you haven't learned that this is an area that you start to cover your shorts and you're popping out on the rallies and how to do it when you have an embedded reading, shame on you. For a year I've been telling you, or two years, about our enhanced Bollinger Band course. It's like trading with one hand tied behind your back if you don't have it. Once you have it, you're not the sucker buying up here and you're most certainly not the sucker selling on these lows. You're waiting for the pops for certain reasons and there's a moving average to come in on. Learn it. It's a $90 course. With it, you get access for two weeks to my Spider ETF along with my Futures ETF morning paid subscriber video, the charting software. That value by itself, that combination is a $90 value. The course is under 100. I'm giving you that free. Give it a try and learn. At the end of this, there'll be an ad about it. XLI, okay. You went down to the combination of the 200 day average in this. I know what I told you on that, okay? I, the videos are out there on YouTube. But it's, it's, it, I would say it over and over. You can bring me in front of a chart and I'll say the same thing ideally over and over. That combination is generally a sign the market wants to find the bottom. It's an area where you've taken the filet. How often do you hear me say that? You've taken the best part of the meat out of the market. The first support was here. 
the combination of the 100 and that. And most certainly that was a cover area. Then when this came apart, it changed. You've now broken through everything. On the way up, the resistance should be again the 100 days. So what did you do? You spent two days over it and you're right back under it. And of course, the upper Bollinger Band, very important. Is there an uptrend? No. You had a vertical price rise that caught a lot of traders short, and you're still not trending. When I look at the energy sector, bullish. Higher low, higher high, momentum up, bias up. I think the pros are buying, and I said it last week. I think they're buying at the 18-week average. I think their stops under here. They got their fingers crossed. Can we get to 9102? On SPY, the market did not make it to the Bollinger Band. Where did it fight its battle? Week one, two, three weeks in a row of hitting it. You lift it up last week, left it, and just came down. Now, is the market going to be able to hold the 18-week? I would assume so. Is there a sell signal on the chart? There is not. So as much as the market fell the most since June today in one day, you haven't left that uptrend. You can come down, doesn't matter. You gotta create a new pattern here. That's all that the chart is saying. It's now saying that 100 week is an important average. GLD, again, you fell to this average, you fought at it. These are weeks, not daily charts, weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, then you broke down. You're always looking to see. And that means if you broke down on the way up, that's going to be a resistance point, especially with this. Didn't get up to it. But as the trend down, it is. What negates GLD from the downside? You'd have to take this out right here, 167.98. That would break the downtrend. It would not start an uptrend. You've got to close over these two averages to start an uptrend. That's not going to be an easy task. GDX, void of trend. The market fell first to the 200-week average. It fought its battle. Then it started the Gorilla Glue trade. What's Gorilla Glue? If you go to the Lowe's, Menards, uh, whatever your store is, Home Depot, it's the strongest commercial glue you can typically buy. There's new brands coming out that are claiming they're stronger. I don't know. I use Gorilla Glue in all the different formats that they have. I find it to be a phenomenal product for the average guy, and I'm very handy outside and inside work. I just used it yesterday. We, we had a broken piece of wood. You buy the waterproof and that. But what's the point of it? It sticks together hard, really good. Sometimes better than without the glue. You hit that until you walk away from it. You don't have much. But when you walk away from it, it's a pause. Then you turn, are you embedding? Learn how to work with embedding. Everything here is still not friendly. Arc, back here. We had talked, maybe this was the area that the markets finally run out of the shorts. And sure enough, when you got through the pattern and you, you got finally, you broke these patterns here, you worked your way up to the 18-week average of closes and very close to that upper Bollinger Band if you didn't hit. It doesn't matter. The market's now in an area where what does it do next? That becomes the, the real problem for the market. And I, I'm questioning it. Why? You're narrowing. Do you see how you're narrowing the Bollinger Band? Here's what happens. Take your finger and spin it around because this is what's going to happen in there. It's not going to go that way, not going to go that way. It's going to spin most likely. The word is most likely for a while as it has to build inertia to break out one way or the other. Apple. Apple got up on a weekly basis. What did it hit? What do you do when you hit the upper Bollinger Band and you're not embedded? Take the course, $90, 13 chapters. You're going to know these things. You're going to say, ah, back here, cover zone. If it embeds, I want back in. Nah, I was short. I, I left that on the table. Okay. And you're waiting for the next event on a weekly basis. The daily charts got more action, but it's the same concepts. Then Tesla. Okay, Tesla is now a new number, 288.09. What happened? Three for one stock split. And the beauty of today's charting software. I remember 10 years ago when they couldn't do this. The charts wouldn't revert the whole database to a three to one split. It's done it. Are we in an uptrend? We are. Is the market got an embedded reading? No. Are we approaching a resistance zone? Yes. At the 317.60 level. Okay. 
I can see that. We're at 288.09. If the market falls to 261.08, the 18-week average, you're out of your uptrend. You're not in a downtrend, but you lose the uptrend. By the way, do you notice it didn't even bounce on the three-for-one split? The market's gotten smart. It's not just Tesla. I'm watching a lot of stock splits, and it used to be on a stock split, you'd buy it pre-split date, because what would happen is you'd get the benefit of the split and it would normally be a pop in the market. Whoever's trading today, they're getting smarter and they understand it's no more than a game to lower the stock so more people can buy it, but it's really not any worth any more money that day. Twitter, you hit your lower band, that was the game. So in here, is there a trend? There is not. I'm a guy that told my friends and me and most of us, we, we bought some. And I call it throwaway money because I believe Musk is going to take ownership up in this area. That, that's still my belief, okay? I want to explain. The company, even if he doesn't buy it, is not worth nothing. Got that? They will probably, if he doesn't buy it, if they prevail, they'll get a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. I think he wants to buy it. I think it's just a matter of, like I said, LVA, LVMH and Tiffany. They tried to walk away. They bought it. They've been changing Tiffany around the way that they want to. TLT. Okay. Higher, high, lower, low. What do you do when you get to the lower Bollinger Band? What was this week's low? 110.86. The Bollinger Band, 110.91. Okay, that's this week. You're at 113.62. Did you have to go through today's event? Learn this stuff. Come on. So well, there's the news. I won't even bother with that. So this brings you into the season. And next week will be just one of these weeks where I take it a little easy and then get ready. You're going to get invites to webinars in September. As I said, special reports. Take this enhanced Bollinger Band course. Learn. Don't make me have to repeat this. I get responses from people and they go, this is just opening up my eyes to something I didn't have. That's what I want to do. Take a look at this. Welcome. I'm Ira Epstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.